Hi, I'm Rolf Frechto, a graduate student from Cornell University. Today, I will be talking about Viaduct, an extensible optimizing compiler for secure distributed programs. This project is joint work with Josh Ajay, Josh Gancher, Andrew Myers, and Elaine Shi. The goal of Viaduct is to allow developers to write distributed programs that will be executed by principals that need to perform computations together. We want to ensure the confidentiality and integrity of data and computation without assuming that these principals trust each other. To ensure security over these distributed programs, cryptography must sometimes be used. The problem is that it is tricky to use cryptography properly. The Vida compiler allows developers to write secure distributed programs without having to specify the exact cryptographic mechanisms for its implementation. It takes as input a sequential program with a high-level security policy and automatically generates a secure and efficient distributed implementation for it. The Vida compiler is optimizing. It reasons about the cost of cryptographic mechanisms and compile programs into efficient implementations while ensuring the security policy is defended. Viaduct is able to reason about when it is possible to avoid the use of expensive crypto. Finally, the Viaduct compiler is extensible. It does not fix the set of cryptographic mechanisms that can implement distributed programs, and it provides a uniform interface for adding support to new mechanisms. There is an extensive literature on providing high-level languages that compile to specific crypto mechanisms, such as multi multi-party computation, or MPC, protocols. However, the vast majority of these systems bake in the protocols that implement source programs. This lack of extensibility limits the practical use of such systems, as it limits the possible security policies implementable in source programs. To our knowledge, Viaduct is the first compiler to provide an extensible suite of cryptographic mechanisms to implement secure distributed programs. We had to devise novel abstractions in order to make Viaduct extensible. Namely, the compiler needs to specify the security requirements of programs without recourse to their implementation, and to reason about the security guarantees of cryptographic Im implementations in a general fashion. To solve these problems, we leverage security labels, as seen in language-based security. First, we use labels to specify the security requirements of source programs. Second. We also use labels to specify the security guarantees of protocols that will store data or perform computations in the program. Together, the Vida compiler uses the common interface of security labels to search for efficient protocols that can securely implement source programs. The Vida compiler has two main phases. First, during label inference, it takes the source program and infers security requirements for each program component. Next, during protocol selection, it uses these security requirements to select efficient protocols for each component that can defend its security requirements. The output of protocol selection is a map from program components to the protocols that will implement them. Principals can execute the generated program together using the Viaduct runtime. The compiler provides a small set of extension points to allow developers to add support for new cryptographic mechanisms that can implement source programs. I will now describe each phase of the Viaduct compiler. First, let's talk about what the Viaduct source what the Vi, what Viaduct source programs look like. A Viaduct program has two parts: a list of hosts or principals that will participate in the distributed program and the program itself. Each host declaration has an authority label, which describes the trust conferred to that host. This authority label, along with other security labels in the program, is grayed out for now. We will come back to them later. In this program, Alice and Bob trust each other not to cheat, but do not trust each other with their private data. As you can see, the program itself is written in a simple imperative language. We call this example the historical millionaires game, a variant of the famous millionaires game by Andrew Yao for multi-party computation. In this game, Alice and Bob each provide as input their total net worth over three periods of time. So Alice's net worth at time t1 will be stored at variable a1, her net worth at time t2 will be stored in variable a2, and so on. They each then compute the minima of their net worths and then compare these minima to see who was richer between the two of them when they were at the poorest. The result of the comparison is then sent as output to both Alice and Bob. Similar to the original Millionaire's game, the distributed program should be implemented such that Alice and Bob do not reveal anything about their net worths other than who was richest at their poorest. 
The security labels used to define the security policy of VIDEC programs are drawn from the FLAM label model as described in a CSF paper by Arden et al. Labels are represented by principles and label operators. For example, A right arrow defines a policy that means A's confidentiality, or secret to principle A. A left arrow defines a policy that means A's integrity, or trusted by principle A. A ampersand B, or A and B, defines a policy that has, that has both A's and B's confidentiality and integrity, which means secret to both A and B, and trusted by both A and B. A meet B defines a policy that has either of A or B's confidentiality and both of their integrity, which means visible to either A and B and trusted by both A and B. Let's go back to the security labels in the historical millionaires game. Looking at the host declarations, we can see that host Alice has labeled A and B integrity, which means that Alice and Bob trust Alice not to cheat, and Alice can read her own private data. Host Bob has labeled B and A integrity, which means that Alice and Bob trust Bob not to cheat, and Bob can read his own private data. Looking at the program itself, we see that the result when comparing Alice and Bob's minimum net worths is wrapped in a declassify expression. This is because the comparison is over both of Alice and Bob's private data, and thus neither of them can read it individually. The declassify expression explicitly allows Alice and Bob to individually see the result of the computation. The declassification allows the program to output the result to both Alice and Bob, as seen in the last line. Now let's talk about how the VIDA compiler infers the security requirements of programs. Let's briefly talk about the difference between information flow and authority. Information flow labels define policies about how data can be used. Meanwhile, authority classifies the power of principles within a system. Importantly, information flow labels are ordered by the restrictiveness of the data policy. This order is the standard flows to relation found in most language-based information flow control systems. Meanwhile, authority labels are ordered by how much authority it represents. This is called the ask for relation over principles. A key property of the FLAM label model is that labels in FLAM can represent both. We can give two different orderings to one set of labels. Like most security type languages, the Videx source language has a type system that ensures well type programs guarantee secure information flow. The key idea of label inference is we use the information flow constraints from the type system to generate authority constraints. We then solve for the minimum authority solution, which allows us to compute an authority label for each program component. The protocol implementing the program component must have authority that is at least as strong as this minimal authority label. We want the minimal authority solution because greater authority requirements usually mean greater trust requirements between participating principles or the use of more or of expensive cryptographic mechanisms. Here is the result of label inference for the historical millionaires game. As we can see, Receiving input from Alice and computing her minimum net worth requires label A and B integrity, meaning that the implementation of these program components must be trusted enough to read Alice's private data, and both Alice and Bob must trust that its execution was performed without cheating. Next, we have a similar case for Bob. The implementation of these components have label B and A integrity. Next, Comparing Alice and Bob's minimum net worths requires label A and B, meaning that its implementation must be trusted to read both Alice and Bob's private data, and both Alice and Bob must trust that its execution was performed without cheating. Finally, the declassified result of the comparison and outputting it to the participants requires label A meet B, meaning that its implementation only needs to read data visible to both Alice and Bob. Now let's talk about how the VIDA compiler uses these security requirements to generate a secure distributed implementation for the source program. The goal of protocol selection is to choose an assignment of protocols that have enough authority to securely implement all program components. Protocols are defined over sets of hosts in the source program. As I said earlier, we use labels to define the security guarantees of protocols, which allows us to easily check whether a particular protocol can securely store data or perform computations. 
The key idea is that we can compute the authority label for a particular protocol using the authority labels of the hosts participating in the protocol. You can think of protocols as higher order principles whose authority is derived from the authority of its participants. Let's see some examples of protocols and their authority labels. The local protocol stores data or performs computations on a single host. Its authority label is exactly the label of the host storing data or performing computations. Replication represents storage or computation that is replicated over multiple hosts. Its authority label is the meat of the authority label of the participating hosts. This is because each host can individually read the data or the results of the computation it performs. Replicating storage and computation also allows each host to trust that the stored data or computation performed cannot be unilaterally corrupted. Next, MPC represents a multi-party computation protocol executed by multiple hosts. MPC protocols can compute over the private data participants without allowing any individual participant from learning about another participant's private data. Thus, its authority label is the conjunction of the authority labels of the participants. The commitment protocol allows a host to send a commitment for a piece of data to another host. The host that receives the commitment can be sure that the commitment creator cannot unilaterally modify the value of the committed data. At the same time, the host does not know what the actual value of the data, of the data is until the commitment is opened. Thus, the authority label of the commitment protocol is the label of the commitment creator conjuncted with the integrity of the, com of the commitment receiver. Finally, the Zero Knowledge Proof Protocol, or ZKP, allows a host, the prover, to perform a computation locally and then send the result of the computation to another host, the verifier, along with an attestation, or the Zero Knowledge Proof, that the computation was performed correctly. As the name implies, the attestation does not reveal anything to the verifier about the private inputs that the prover computed over, except what is revealed by the result of the computation. Thus, the authority label of the ZKP protocol is the authority label of the prover conjuncted with the integrity of the verifier. In general, many protocols can satisfy the security requirements to store data or perform computations. The VITA compiler uses a cost model and it solves a constraint optimization problem to choose the most efficient protocol assignment. The compiler assigns high cost to crypto protocols like MPC commitments and ZKP and assigns low cost to local and replication protocols so that it can avoid the use of cryptography unless necessary. The VITA compiler generates the following protocol assignment for the historical millionaires game. First, Alice and Bob receive inputs and compute their minimum networks locally on their machines. Next, Alice and Bob execute an MPC protocol to compare their minimum net worths. Using an MPC protocol ensures that neither Alice nor Bob learn the other's minimum net worth, only which one was richer at their poorest. Finally, the result of the comparison is declassified and stored in the be richer variable, which is replicated on Alice and Bob's machines. Alice and Bob then use their local copy of be richer to output the result. With a protocol assignment at hand, let's finally talk about how hosts can execute the distributor program generated by the VIDA compiler. The VIDA runtime system consists of a set of protocol backends that implement the actual, pro the actual protocols that will execute the distributor program. For the two protocol backends that execute the implementation, a clear text backend and an MPC backend. The clear text backend implements the local and replication protocols, and as its name implies, it stores data and performs computations in clear text by interpreting the source language directly. Meanwhile, the MPC backend represents the comparison between Alice and Bob's minimum net worths by building a circuit, which is the standard interface provided by frameworks for MPC protocols. The circuit is then executed by the MPC protocol, and the result is replicated in both Alice and Bob's machines, which then output its value. That concludes our overview of the VIDA compiler. Our novel abstractions allow VIDA to be extensible and able to easily support new cryptographic mechanisms to implement secure distributed programs. There's still a lot of exciting work to be done for Viaduct. We're currently implementing on adding support for new backends to implement source programs, including ORAM and trusted enclaves like SGX. 
We're also thinking about how to prove the Vida compiler pipeline correct, which means proving distributed programs that Vida generates secure in the universal composability framework for cryptographic protocols. And that's it. Thank you for listening, and I'll be happy to take questions.